In this video, traders, we're going to look at ETFs with the lowest expense ratio. Stay tuned. Hey guys, warm welcome to you. So if you're trading ETFs, you know that the expense ratio is an important thing to look at. It's basically the expense ratio is how much you are charged to hold this ETF. It's made up of all the administration charges, or the, most of it is made up of actually the fund manager charges of the guy, the manager who's actually managing the fund, even though most of the time it's specifically split and it's specifically uh, leveraged according to the prospectus. But you want to keep that expense ratio low, otherwise it's just eating in to your returns. Okay, so some of the, I've listed some of the ones that have got the lowest expense ratio. It means that they're not necessarily good investments, but it just means that you pay very, very little to trade it. It's basically just buying a, buying a stock. Okay, so the first one is TFLO, which is the Treasury Floating Rate Bond. This basically tracks the performance of the US Treasury Floating Rate Index, which is composed of US Treasury Floating Rate Bonds. Assets under management for this are $300 million, and the average volume over three months period is 82,000 shares. Not massive. Dividend yield 1.5%. Important metric here relates to this video is the expense ratio is 0.15%. So that doesn't sound so great. And actually, uh, when I'm doing this video, we've got a year to date performance of about 2%. So in reality, you're not going to get massive returns from this one. Uh, this one is more interesting to me. I like this, this one. Uh, CIBR, which is the Cyber Security ETF. A uh, really good way of getting exposure to cybersecurity. And by the way, ETFs, the whole point of an ETF is you're not confident in your stock picking skills. You can grab an ETF and get exposure, broad exposure to kind of what you want to get exposed to, for example, uh, cybersecurity or whatever it may be, whatever the ETF may be, and pay a small charge for that. So that's why you would use an ETF. Anyway, back to this cybersecurity ETF. Tracks the performance of the CEA Cybersecurity Index Assets on this one, $766 million. A three month volume, a little bit higher, 196,000. So you probably get in and out reasonably easy. Dividend yield, pretty low, 0.07%. Uh, but these cybersecurity companies are reasonably new, right? So they're probably reinvesting their cash as opposed to paying out a dividend. Expense ratio, only 0.6% on this. Send me going for a few years. Uh, and cybersecurity uh, is probably going to be pretty important as we kind of push on uh, into the future. And so potentially some of these companies are going to be well positioned uh, or not. They might be overvalued. I don't know. That's a commercial decision for you to make uh, as a trader. Okay, so the next one we've got is the SCHB, which is Swab uh, US Broad Market ETF. And this basically tracks the Dow Jones Broad Stock Market Index, which is uh, the two, two, about 2,500 two publicly traded companies, the largest ones, uh, 12 billion or 13 billion assets under management there, uh, or net assets, should I say. The three-month volume on this is almost 800,000 shares, so reasonably easy for us to get in and out of. Dividend yield, 1.78%, not bad. Expense ratio, really low, 0.03% on this. Um, this is kind of one to... Uh, you know, obviously, if you're if you're bullish and you're thinking that the whole broad market is going to pick up, that's fine. Volume's a little on the low side compared to some of the others, so you might struggle to get in and out of it. Um, but the expense ratio is pretty low. Okay, so what we've got now? So let's look at VOO and VTI. So these are both Vanguard uh, ETFs. So VIO, let's go that one first. This basically tracks the performance of the S&P 500. So similar to the SPY uh, ETF, this one's just a Vanguard one. Uh, ad sets on this one are 99 uh, billion, almost 100 billion, so pretty decent. Uh, three month volume, 2.7 million, plenty to get stuck into there. Dividend yield, 1.84%, and expense ratio, not bad, and 0.04%. Um, so yeah, and what we're looking at on the VTI. So VTI is similar, uh, but this actually tracks the performance of the US total market index, CRSP, which is all the stocks on the NYSE and the NASDAQ. 100 billion assets on this, average volume 2.7 million, so pretty decent, easy enough to get in and out of. Uh, dividend yield 1.83%, expense ratio 0.04%. Uh, this has got apparently many many of the same holdings as the SCHB, and they trade in tandem most of the time. Uh, but there's a lot more liquidity in this VTI, and a little slightly bit higher yield on that one. All right, so let's move on to SCHF, which is 
um, developed X US index. So in other words, this is basically tracks uh, large caps and mid cap stocks in developed countries, but strips out the US exposure. So net assets of this um, are 15.4 billion, 3.1 million shares done, average volume, three month volume. Dividend yield pretty decent, 2.6%. Expense ratio 0.06%. Um, so it's basically a way of getting exposure to developed markets without getting involved in the US, if that's your thesis. And the final one we've got is IVV, which is the iShares uh, Core S&P 500. Tracks the performance of the S&P 500. Assets under management on this 157 billion. Three month volume 3.8. Dividend yield 1.84% and expense ratio 0.04%. So very, very similar to a lot of the others on here. So you've got to basically pick the one that suits you in terms of dividend yield, in terms of the expense ratio and don't forget um, you know that three month volume is important what's the volume that's done so how liquid is it because ultimately guys if there is a problem and you need to get out quickly you need liquidity it may not seem like a problem if you're trading you know thousand shares two thousand shares five thousand shares whatever it may be but when things aren't going so well and that liquidity dries up, you don't want to be paying a hefty spread. So look at something that's got liquidity. Expense ratio is low, so if you're holding it for a long time, you're not getting penalized for it. Dividend yield is reasonably high. And read the prospectus, because a lot of the ETFs in the small print of the prospectus, specifically recently uh, XIV, the VIX ETF prospectus basically uh, had a small print in it, which ended up uh, screwing over quite a lot of investors who hadn't looked at that small print. So it's rare, but you are investing in a specific product here with an ETF. So it pays if you're going to hold something that you say, okay, I'll do my due diligence on my trade idea, i.e. it's going to be in emerging markets or it's going to be in the S&P 500 or it's going to be in developed markets, whatever it may be, or bonds, whatever. You say that's your thesis, I'm bullish on that. What's the best vehicle for me to do that? Okay, ETF is, let me pick the correct ETF for me. Then go onto that ETF website, whoever's doing it, whether it's iShares, whether it's um, MSCI, whether it's Vanguard, whatever it may be, and Spider, uh, have a look, get the prospectus out, read it, look through it and see, okay, these are the rules, this is how it's performed, blah, 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 blah. Any caveats, any kind of unusual scenarios that I need to be aware of, because then you're fully informed and you can say, okay, I've got my trade thesis, these are the kind of best vehicles to go in, I'll pick this one and away you go. All right, guys, those are the ETS with the lowest or some of the ETS with the lowest expense ratio. If you know any others, stick them in the comment section below. Always interested to hear what you guys have got to say. Take care, bye-bye.